Tough 31 episode 10 was interesting to say the least. Bracketona switches teams, but we already knew that. Hear how it actually went down. Not how they cut it, but how it actually went down right now on this show. Timur Valiev, my man, he gets an he gets a visit from Islam Mahachev, the lightweight champion in the UFC. He finally gets to speak Russian after not speaking Russian for five weeks. And I break it all down with worldwide superstar recording artist Brantley Gilbert. Bruce, hit him with the intro. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! The Ultimate Fighter Season 31 Reaction Show, brought to you by Car Steel, hosted by Michael Adler. That's right, boys and girls, you heard the man, Bruce Buffer. This is the Tough 31 Reaction Show, episode 10, hosted by yours truly, Michael Chandler, and brought to you by Car Shield. Now, before we get going, talking about this awesome episode, every week we do a giveaway. Connor, who's a winner for this week's giveaway? This week we've got Andrew Mattern from Wisconsin. Andrew Mattern from Wisconsin. Congratulations. Now, what did he win? If you guys haven't been keeping up, my favorite book of all time, As a Man Thinketh, a signed copy of As a Man Thinketh with an awesome bookmark of a Panini card signed by yours truly. We are giving out 12 of these bad dogs. This was the 10th one that we are giving away, so there's still time for you to click the link in the description or the link in the show notes to enter to win. There's a bunch of different ways to enter. Uh, Andrew, subscribe to the YouTube channel, I believe. So that is how he won. Now, episode 10 was a great one. We're in the semifinals, and I get to break it all down with a good friend of mine, a man who I've known for a very long time. I am a fan of his music. Um, he is an awesome singer, songwriter, recording artist, country music legend, Brantley Gilbert. How are What's we, brother? What's going on, brother? What's up, good dude? Good to see you. Hey, bring it in, man. <laughs> good to see you, brother, man. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, you and I have known each other for quite a while. I remember the first time we met, CMT Awards, like, a decade ago. Oh yeah. A decade ago. And we, when we've talked fights ever since, that's why I knew you'd be an awesome guest here. Number one, cause you're the man, but number two, <laughs> because you like fighting. You watch Absolutely. fighting. You're up, you've been up to date watching the tough show. Um, you knew all about all the guys, Katona, Timor, all yeah. that stuff, man. So, so thank you for doing this for me. Absolutely, bro. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, man. You know, I know you're a busy dude out there on the road. New got a new, uh, album. You just came oh, out. Oh, yeah. So, Got a new album working and working, uh, working on the next one, working as always. One. Nonstop, dude. That's just never non stops. Nonstop getting after it, yeah. dude. Um, well, this week's fight was Brad Katona versus Timor Valiev, and we're going to get right into it by breaking it down. Uh, we're going to watch the highlights and uh, heck of a fight. Oh, man. Very good fight. Dog fight. Dana loved it, so that's all that matters. Because my, my goal has always been get these guys to the UFC. So even though Timor lost, dude's going to end up in the UFC. He's going to yeah. hopefully have a spot in the finale. Um, obviously not going to be competing for the ultimate fighter, you know, gold, if you will, get to get the contract, but he'll be in the finale. Let's nice. check out these highlights real quick. Dana was talking nonstop about how big the shots were. The crazy amount of strikes. Brad Katona ends up with this huge... I was not impressed with Brad's first fight, and I wasn't sure what to expect And, here. yeah, but I think that was the one thing, too. He wasn't... Hungry, he, he was very reserved his first fight. This fight, Katona came out I think Brad looking pretty darn good. Surprised Timor. I think he surprised everybody in attendance, and Brad was landing pretty decent shots. That blood, but, but man. Timor, for the most part, was Supposedly it was a headbutt. I don't know. Timor was exploding. But they were loud, they were thudding. That like, cut he had on the side like of his crazy. head... You know, nice <laughs> you were saying the way he moves, he looks like a zombie. <laughs> but Braveheart. Braveheart, man. But dude, Timor, Timor does a does a really good job of keeping you out of your rhythm. And Brad, being as cerebral as he is, always wanted to kind of be in his rhythm. And Timor was so unpredictable, he was able to keep him out of his out of his rhythm all the time. Switching stances, throwing the knee. I think I think Timor landed. The bigger shots, the better shots. I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one. Just from that was a good one right there. But I think Timor kind of has that style where, or that that reaction when he gets hit, he kind of like drops his head and looks like he's hurt, but he really doesn't. That head throw right there was freaking awesome. To end the round, on. right? Yeah, to end the round. <clears throat> so Dana's got it one to one right now. And I think I think Timor landed the more shots and the bigger shots. 
throughout most of the first half of the, the round. That left hook was one of the best shots. He gets a takedown. It looked like most of Brad's were like glancing. Yeah. Keep it, keep it locked. And Timor, Timor got the uh, got the takedown, had some control. Brad was slowed down a little bit there. It was a war. Both guys deserve to win. And Timor thought he won, man. He was screaming, Team Chandler, Team Chandler. And came back. I thought to the, he won. Yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, going back and watch, I, I got to be honest. When I was there, you know, and they showed a little clip of me talking to Timor, just kind of like, I don't know, man, I don't know. It was kind of an I don't know. It sounded like I don't know how they scored it for him, but I also was like, I don't really know how I would score that fight either. But going right. back and watching it, I mean, I have it in my notes here that Timor, I think there's a very – good case that he could have won all three of those rounds absolutely now maybe he lost round two i think he definitely i think he definitely won round three so i don't know you know it's it's tough but the good thing is like i said my goal is always to get these guys to the ufc because there was only going to be two only two guys actually get a contract you know 135 there's a champion a winner right 155 there's a winner so only those two guys get the contract a guaranteed contract but the goal was to get these guys mentally physically and spiritually ready to go in there, put on a good showing, fight with a full heart. And because you got Hunter Campbell, Dana White, and other UFC brass sitting right there, you know, right. you lose these fights and still end up in the UFC. You know, they right. say, hey, you, you lost, you didn't win the ultimate fighter, but hey, you're still going to end up in the UFC, you know? For sure. So that's, uh, and it was definitely an entertaining fight. His other one was too. Yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, because like, Timor just has that, you know, we were talking about it. He just, he, those guys, those Russian guys, man, they 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 come from such a different place that their idea of discomfort is different. Their idea of kind of craziness and right. chaos is different, you know. Whereas a lot of people like it nice, nice and like black and white, you know, safe. Whereas he's just right. like he's winning the fight and still trying to throw crazy spinning stuff and <laughs> throw an axe kick. You were like, when we watch you're like, I, I love when they throw them. I never seen one land, but I love when never I, once, <laughs> you know? So I think it is kind of one of them things where, you know, it, you know, I like to throw, I like to throw strikes. I like to keep it basic, but I like to throw strikes that have like a 90% success rate. You know, you might right. miss cause you have bad aim, but you're spinning stuff and your, your axe kicks and those kind of stuff. A lot of times don't land, but it also does, when you encroach on somebody's space, you know, if there's space between me and you, and I'm throwing an axe kick and I'm throwing something crazy at you, you start putting seeds of doubt in guys' heads. And I think that's, I think that's, that was the best way to beat a guy like Brad Katona, you know? Cause, Get him you know, outside of that regimented. Yeah. Yeah. And he, you know, cause he, he thinks so much. He is one of the most cerebral guys I've ever been around. So him He's like calculating, you know, math problems and biochemistry stuff in, in his head while he's while he's fighting. And he's probably, you know, and that's why he's good, you know. Yeah. But if you're able to take him out of that, you know, that's going to be your best scenario to be able to to be able to to win. His first fight, Carlos was kind of very basic, but whereas Timor, man, he threw front leg kick, bad leg, back leg kick, spinning stuff, high kicks, low kicks, teeps, uh, the straight kick to the face, man. Like, yeah, that was and nasty. that was just his legs, yeah. you know. And uh so it was, it was tough to see Timor not get the win, but I think he's going to end up in the finale, whenever that is. I'm still waiting for the UFC to tell me when the finale is so I can go support my guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they're keeping it nice and under wraps. So you guys don't know out there, and I still don't know here. We are a couple of weeks away from the show being over. Even now. the coach don't know. Even the coach don't know. Speaking of the coach, you you see Connor coaching his coaching his coach. <laughs> that's awesome. There's always look a, at me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's always a there's always a, a a part every week where they're showing Connor doing something very interesting. And I <laughs> and I don't say this to make fun of him, although maybe a little bit. But like he's always doing something interesting, you know, where he's like he's on one knee and he's throwing his leg up and doing showing these guys something. Where I'm like, these dudes are fighting in three days from now the, you showing them this or trying to trying to strengthen their glute muscle or whatever you're trying to do right now that ain't gonna win them this next fight dude right. <laughs> show them basic stuff that's gonna get them put them in a better situation to win the fight just the look at me yeah, well, stuff, that's that's right. yeah beautiful. He's, he's like you want to do it here and you want to do that you do the like a circle and this look at me look at look at me look at, look me. at me 
<laughs> look at all my shit. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It was. It was like just typical Connor. Like, look at me. Dude, you know, like, I'm telling you, I don't I don't mind you picking on me a little bit. I you know, dude, I, I think there's some things about him that are undeniable, right? I mean, mm-hmm. dude's a superstar, but you know, Cerrone's a good buddy of mine. I went down to that fight and that happened and I kind of had a chip on my shoulder after that one. And then, you know, you and I are buddies. So he's, I think, you know, my, my, my dislike of him comes from the fact that most of the time he's fighting my buddies. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's true. That's a little unfair. Yeah. Right? It's a little unfair, right? But I'll go out there and write that, write that wrong for Cerrone. You know? There you go. There, knock this dude there you go. Hell yeah. <laughs> it is tough. But and, and actually, like, every time I've had a, a guest on the show who – you know, most of them ha- at least know a little bit about MMA. You're a little bit deeper into it than a lot are. Um, but it is true. It's, it's, you end up becoming friends with people that you end up disliking the other person because they're fighting. And it's, it's such a, it's such, it's so much different than every other sport. Cause it's, it's an individual sport and it's like, Hey, I'm a, if I'm a Titans fan and you're an Eagles fan or whatever, like it's a full team who lost or won that night, not just the one guy. Right. Uh, like, absolutely. Like I'm friends with this dude and this one dude has to go fight this other one dude. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's, it's crazy to me. I, one of the reasons I respect you guys so much is, is just for that reason. Like, I play ball coming up, right? But even what I do for a living now, you know, if we have a bad show, you know, we're in it as a group. And I know, you know, as a fighter, you and your coaches are in it as a team, right? But at the end of the day, all the rest of us see when the mm. TV pops on is is you and this dude going to war, yep. right? And I can't think of anything more rewarding or exciting or badass feeling than whipping somebody's ass. But I can't think of anything worse than getting <laughs> yeah. tagged in front yeah. of millions of people. Either. Yeah, dude. Like when so, you dude. you get embarrassed and you're like, dude, there ain't nobody I can blame it on. Like anybody want to take this? <laughs> <laughs> hey, anybody, anybody want to take this guilt I feel right now? I'm just laying shame. here bleeding. Yeah, can shit. anybody? Yeah, anybody take this pain away from me? Yeah, but you know, it takes a different individual to put yourself in that. Yeah, in that spot, you got to be a little off your rocker. Yeah, well, and, and the thing too, like, because uh, we've talked about it actually on this show with other artists too. It's like even if you have a bad show, it still wasn't a bad show. You know, like it wasn't, Absolutely. maybe it wasn't as good as y'all know you could have done, but it's still like, hey, people had a good time. They're out there chanting your name and they're screaming. They're having a good time with their friends. They're drinking, they're drinking and they're partying it up and having a good time. They still had a good time. Even if you might've missed a couple chords or the guitar wasn't working or the speaker system sucked at this amphitheater exactly. that you went to, it was still a fun time. You Absolutely. know, it was still a, still a party. Uh, whereas when we lose, it's like, this, there was nothing good about this. Everybody, there was, there was everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows, and I can't hide. Like I can't wait to get back to the locker room as soon as I possibly can. <laughs> you see guys like knocking people over trying to get out of the octagon, yeah, back like, to the dressing room. Let me out of here. Dude. I get it. You know. Uh, so the, um, so speaking of Bracketona, we had a little bit of a. We we knew this was coming because I knew we, I had this conversation with him. So I knew the conversation was coming. I figured they would have showed it last week. They showed that he was talking to Trevor Wells that he's like, oh, I think it makes a lot of sense for me to switch, switch team. So I knew, you know, I knew for sure he was right. going to switch even before he switched. But then also I've talked about it on the show too. My team didn't really like him that much either. You know, right. like he was team Chandler, but like we had seven guys on team Chandler and then Brad Katona basically. And that's not a, a stab at him, but the guys were just like, Hey, he's not really, one of us kind of well, I mean like even that. briefly when they showed it every time they showed the interaction with you guys it's like you were trying to get him to buy into the team program yeah. and in his mind the whole time his team was the other team no yeah. the other team yeah. or, or just himself too you know like, <laughs> like I would imagine at the very beginning he's like dang I kind of wish I was on that team and then he's like okay well I can't be on that team I got to be on this team but now I'm only looking out for myself and that's that's where I kind of alluded to in the past where he he had this little cut on his chin and he's like well hey I can't train with the team because I have this cut and I'm like if I had that kind of cut, I would be in there training with the team. So you can't really, we're not seeing eye to eye here. And I'm not going to go take one of my coaches and have you go do your own film study or have you do your own mat mitt work while everybody, we're taking one coach away from the other seven guys. So that was right. where some of it, but I get, you know, when you're, when you're in an individual sport, like we just talked about, and then he is on a, it's a team show, but it's really an individual show Absolutely. You know, in his mind. And a lot of these guys, you know, I would probably look at it that way as well. So I can't really you know, throw stones at him for that. But he just always needed something different. He always wanted extra. something different. So we call him bougie Brad or something. Like oh that. yeah. What'd he say? Uh, oh, diva. Dave, yeah, diva. Yeah, diva. The diva is of the diva. And that's, and that's why I respect, <laughs> I respect that about him too, where yeah. he's like, okay, I know I get it. I, I, I'm a diva. Like I get it, you know, like, and he can kind of tell, I'm like, 
yeah, dude, like I, that's not going to happen. Like, right. you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, oh you, yeah, no, that's not going to happen either. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, so I was just like, and I'm going a thousand miles an hour. I'm, I got, I'm, I'm dealing with everybody's emotions in there, making sure everybody's in the right place. And nobody ever asked for anything. They only just took what was given to them and, and just, and, and loved the service that we were providing for them there. You know, we're there to serve these guys, but there was just the one guy who was like, yeah, thank you for that, but that's not good enough. I need you to do it this way. I need you to do this. And, th and I'm like, okay, dude. <laughs> yeah. Can't do it. Yeah. I would go love to. <laughs> yeah. Go over there in the corner and see what they, go, go talk to that weight bench over there. See what, <laughs> see what he'll give you. You know, like, so, so it's when they, level. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's show the, the clip. So I knew this was getting set up when we were, we were about to start. And the guys had, the guys had a media day or something. They had some kind of press day where they had to come in an hour early or so and do interviews and whatnot. And he comes in, he comes in dressed up kind of all by himself. And I'm like, okay, here it is. Like the producer set this up. So Brad comes walking in. There's the beautiful apex that I was at. It seemed like a thousand hours. <laughs> you got audio? One of his UFC vets move on to the oh, yeah. semis, and McGregor only had one prospect make it through. We wanted to give the fighters the opportunity to switch teams so they could better prepare for their next fight. But in the Looking end, Looking like Brad a biology Kona teacher. Only one yeah, coming in. This is too much about some shit. I know it's not goodbye or anything like no, that. No, you're stuck on it, dude. I know. My heart says Brad will go out there and compete maybe better if if Kavanaugh and his team and his, the people who have been training him for the last five years are there. And I truly think each individual deserves to be put in the best scenario for themselves. For better or worse. Yeah, thank you. I think it was a fairly better or worse. mutual yeah. and understandable switch. Mutual and understandable switch. And, th and that's true. And, and, that, and that's, that's truly... I have nothing but respect for Chandler. Yeah, that's valid. And that's, yeah, and that's truly how I felt. I was like... You know, part of me was like, yeah, man, you know, like I got, cause at this point we had, we had, we only had lost one fight, you know? So it was just Hunter who was out of the competition and I had to focus on my other guys. Um, so part of me was like, well, if this one guy would do better over there and he wants to go over there, it just actually takes more, takes more work off of me. I can spend all of that time that I was going to have to put into Katona on the, on my team Chandler guys, you know? So, absolutely. And, but ultimately too, is like, well, if he's going to go out there and compete better with that team, let him go do it. You yeah. know? So it, uh, it was kind of a good, it was a good little mutual, you know, mutually beneficial thing. You didn't shed tears. No, I didn't. Yeah. I, did not shed, yeah. I did not shed tears was <laughs> for it. You know, I was like, okay, we're good. I remember the one episode where, like, the whole team's in the van ready to go back to the house, and they're waiting on him, and he's in there talking to his other coach. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, I'm, I imagine that was a that was a weird situation for all of them, too. Like, what's he talking to him about? Well, that was what it always was, too. You know, there was always a little bit of, you know, he's Team Chandler, but does Team Chandler have a mole? You know, like, is this, is he over there, you know? giving out information, you know, Cody Gibson's got a knee injury, right? Uh, you know, Jason Knight, they showed him, he had a cut right before the fight. You know, there's, yeah. there's other things that happened, other things that were bothering people, whether it had been a foot, an ankle, a shoulder, whatever. Were, and I'm not saying Brad did that, but there was always that little bit of, well, but, the he, but he might was be, there. but he might be. Yeah. Right. And even just him, you know, you're supposed to kind of move as a, as a team together, right? Hey guys, we're done. Okay. Everybody shower up and then go to the, go to the vans and then everybody's in the van except for him. And he's, he stayed back just to spend time with his, which, which is funny because it's, it's kind of a competitive advantage, you know, cause, it, cause we, we brought up the zoom calls. So now these guys actually get the opportunity to have some zoom calls, right? Every, when you're away from everybody for four weeks or whatever, you just want a little piece of home, you yeah, know, absolutely. a little piece of, of normalcy, you know, that's why they were, they were able to have like one or two pictures, a printed out picture that they could have, but no, contact with the outside world so it was almost kind of like brad had a little bit of a competitive advantage because he was able to have his cake and eat it too he had his team or team chandler Absolutely. but then he also had like his his coach from back home he could he can go catch up with nutritionist his, yeah his, you know where like that was a sense of home for him yeah and i actually never really thought about that until now there was somewhat of, of a competitive advantage because he could be like well I'll make those guys wait and i'm gonna go talk to kavanaugh for 10 minutes or 20 minutes because it makes me feel good and there was always just that kind of I'm team Brad Katona motto around everything he did, which didn't sit well with my, <laughs> my team. Well, yeah. And I mean, you grew up playing ball too. So you, the, the team atmosphere, man, I learned more from playing 
ball and being on teams than I ever did anything else in my life. Yeah. I, I run more organization now, kind of a, a mix between a motorcycle club and a ball team. <laughs> like, you know there, you there you go. <laughs> hey, camaraderie. There's camaraderie in both, man. Absolutely. That's that's the cornerstone. And I think, you know, maybe, and I, I am able to sit here and admit maybe the way that I made it such a team atmosphere and so much camaraderie, maybe that wasn't the best way to do it. You know, I... I don't know, I don't know, man. Right after you talked about these guys not having any any parts of home out there with them, man, I think it was kind of cool. When I watched it, it was kind of cool for me to see these guys develop relationships with each other within, yeah. within the team and also kind of crossing over with the other guys too. But especially with your coaching staff, to me, I mean, what a cool advantage. You brought some of the best coaches in, yeah. in the world in, and these guys are in an atmosphere where – you know, there there may be times down the road where they fight each other again, but mm -hmm. they all got to share the experience with with different coaches, learning something outside the box that they probably wouldn't have learned had yeah. they not done that experience. Man, I and obviously, I mean, you almost clean sweeped them, so you you, you did a lot right. Yeah, <laughs> well, definitely in the definitely in them them quarterfinals fights for sure, and then all of a sudden, you know the the high wears off of that. And then all of a sudden it's, Oh shoot. Okay. Now we got to fight each other. Yeah. You know, now this dude that I, you know, which, <laughs> which was cool because I mean, you saw Austin Hubbard and, and Roe last week, the, the matchups go up on the board. They both find out at the exact same time. And their reaction was, well, let's go finish that card game that we played earlier. You know, they, they yeah. were playing the card game. They were just like, well, this is what we do. We got to fight each other. We knew there was a possibility that we were probably going to fight each other. And here we are, you know? So it was a good, I think the team atmosphere when you're away from you don't you're not in your normal team back in wherever you're from you know you know you don't have your your family unit where you're from you don't have any any comforts whatsoever they weren't they're living in a house with 15 other dudes you know there's only mm -hmm. three bathrooms there you know they're yeah. they're just having to cook and clean and do all that other the other stuff with guys that they might fight and it was just a so the funny thing that I, and they said it numerous times, them coming to training was, was the highlight of the day. Not because they wanted to train. It was just a way to get out of that house. You right. know, the coolest house in the world gets boring after a minute. Dude, if you end right. up with 15 dudes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and they were, they were under strict orders too. Cause I know I went over there two or three times once or twice to kind of hang out and then two times to cut weight. And I remember both times or no, one time I got into a conversation with a guy and, and the ball, a basketball bounced almost bounced over the um, fence. And there was actually like some animals over there. Someone had like a donkey or something like that. <laughs> and I was like, hey man, y'all ever go over there? He's like, no, dude, they, they watch us nonstop. There's like, they got the cameras on us. They said, they said, if we cross any, if we cross this property line, we're kicked out of the show, we're fined. There was like a lot of repercussions, right? Wow. And which makes a lot of sense. I mean, you got to have these guidelines in place or all this, all this and you're in Vegas. You know, yeah. Imagine if they were like, hey, man, you guys should do what you want. Just make sure you show up to practice tomorrow. Yeah, right, dude. The ratings might go up yeah. a little bit. Yeah, exactly. We, there would definitely be some ratings <laughs> boosts. They're like, wait, where's he at? Wait, he's in jail? Uh, You're like, oh, man. <laughs> well, I had to go Send a bunch out of fighters out yeah. to Vegas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now's a good time to thank our show sponsor, Car Shield. We're all about who's the greatest here, and Car Shield really goes to the mat for vehicle owners. They're the number one most trusted auto service protection company in America, and they're here to help protect you from surprise car repair costs. Flexible month-to-month -month plans through Car Shield can cover up to 5,000 parts of your car after they break down. When you're covered through Car Shield, you'll always have someone in your corner at the repair shop. Visit carshield.com and check it out now. Now, back to the show. Um, so the the uh, the Katona kind of mindset of hey I'm on my own it you know it's obviously worked well for him he won the won this fight he's now in the finale um, but man my guy Timor there was another cool moment do you have that Islam clip there was another cool moment obviously Islam Mahachev the, our champion at 155 my my division um, he came in and visited and uh, said hello to Timor. You know, we did say the Brad thing, like, you know, everybody's kind of alienated from their family and it is an individual thing and he was an approaching it that way. But man, after after talking to you and, and re watching that, he he really did he he had his coaching staff the whole time. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, right? That's 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 Yeah, you know, at least talking. Maybe they weren't training together, but they were talking, yeah. you know. So it was kind of crazy. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't really <laughs> dig that a whole Wait a lot. Second, I know. know my spidey senses are tingling. <laughs> yeah. Hey, my whole team had their spidey senses tingling the whole time. You know, we're like, I don't know about this guy. I'm like, just give him a chance, guys. And I'm like trying to be the peacemaker. Just give him a chance, man. Give him a chance. They're like, no, man, I don't like him. I'm like, all right, all right. Never mind. Don't give him a chance. He had a chance. Yeah. He had one chance. Yeah. He blew it. Yeah. So they're uh, team wars here training. And because because that was a thing, too. I think there was three different fights during the time we were there because the UFC puts on a show every single weekend. And there was three right. fights in Vegas. So Islam came and visited him. Islam Makhachev, lightweight champion. Oh, I remember that. He's good, man. Uh, it was nasty. I was very really happy. That is cool. You can cut it right there because they, they were talking and, and he was he was saying some nice things. I thought it was cool that, you know, Islam and I didn't really like each other much, you know, here and there. But now we've kind right. of mended our fences where, like, I want to fight him. He wants to fight me eventually, whatever. Um, Hell yeah. So it was cool to have, you know, Timor talk about how my, uh, you know, he was had a great team, coaches naming me by name. But it was funny because we, we both giggled and laughed during the show where he was like, he's like, I get to speak. Re I got to speak Russian. You know, he's like, I haven't the first time in weeks. Yeah. He's like, I haven't spoke Russian in five, five, four or five weeks. And it was, and it kind of hit me. I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. He hasn't Imagine not being able to speak. Like say, you know, a foreign language and you're over in Italy or wherever you're at. And you're like, man, I haven't spoke English at all in five weeks. Yeah. It's gotta be weird. Well, I, that would just mean I hadn't communicated with anybody in five weeks. <laughs> Dude, if I go above the Mason Dixon line, I almost need a translator. <laughs> It's yeah. bad. Should we put subtitles on? The, should we put subtitles on this? Bro, story? let me tell you what just happened. I mean, it's just a true story, and <laughs> not to take, not to veer off too bad. But I did an episode of New York Inc. one time, and it was on the top part of this arm. And the guy that did it was Tommy Montoya. Yeah. Okay. Now, back when we did this, this is years, years, years back. He had a pretty strong accent. Like I had some trouble understanding New York him. accent. Or he, I don't know if he was Puerto Rican okay. or whatever, something, but he was, you know, for whatever reason, I was having a hard time understanding him. He was obviously having a hard time understanding me, mm -hmm. but my dad calls me one day out of the blue and he goes, oh, hell, I'm madder than hell. And I was like, what? And he said, yeah, I said, this ain't right. Have you seen that show yet? And usually when my dad calls me, I I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, I don't know when these things air. Yeah. yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? The tattoo show. So I watched it, and dude, it's wild. So he would talk, you know, when we're on the show, like we'd be talking to each other, and he'd talk. And then when I would speak, I was the one with the subtitles. Oh, no it way. It was wild as hell. He would talk, yeah. no subtitles. No him subtitles. Sub <laughs> he gave them to me. <laughs> well, we might have to put some subtitles on the on the, on the the show. We'll see. Yeah, just maybe for, necessary. Yeah, just for, just for uh, production. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was it was funny, like, Imagine not being able to speak your your language for you know because he was speaking pretty broken English. He actually had pretty good English, you know. Right. And and he the one thing about the show is we spent you know four weeks together with these guys, almost five weeks together with these guys. We spent hours and hours and hours together. So we had so there were so many conversations that haven't even and will never make air. You know, like Timor and I, he he could speak really. Well, but whenever he, they always pull the clip. He's just like, I'm, I'm going to smash you. Or they're just like, you know, they pull, pull like little one-liners, you know, like kind of that Russian one-liner. But it was, it was funny. We got a, we got a kick out of him. And he's like, it was good to speak Russian because I haven't spoke, spoke Russian in four or five weeks. I'm like, dang, dude, I never really thought about that. You think about removing these guys from their environments, you know, and they've got the pictures. The one guy had the picture of his family. That, that hit home for me because, you know, I spent a lot of time away from, yeah, right. from Amber and the kids. And I mean, but, but imagine for that guy, right? Like. He's in a whole other country. A whole other country. Who knows when he came over? Right. So that was that was what I kind of said too. It was at least a week that these guys had to come to Vegas before we even started the show, and they were in a hotel room and they weren't allowed to leave the hotel room. So for him, going through customs and coming over from another country, who knows? He could have been there two weeks by himself. That's wild, man. You know. So that was the that was one of the craziest. And I know they were at least back then they were able to use their their cell phones. I think their cell phones got taken away a couple days before the show and it was like, Hey, turn it off and you'll get it in four or five weeks, whatever. But then they were, they were talking about able, they were able to use the landline at the, at the hotel or whatever. I think, I don't know if that's, I'm allowed to say that, but they did, <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> uh, you know? Uh, but yeah, them being able to do, and I did think what a tough insult to injury because only the, uh, 
only the guys who made it to the semifinals got to do the Zoom calls. So the guys who have lost, they've all been there just as long, but the guys who had lost didn't get to do the Zoom calls. So, oh. so, so far it was just what we say, Roosevelt, uh, Roosevelt and Austin last week, and now Brad and Timor this week. So that's four, four dudes, but the, all, all the dudes that lost, the eight dudes that lost in the quarters, they're just sitting there being training partners and never. So they, I, I, I noticed that and I, I watched on and off kind of, I, I can't say that I've ever really invested in a season before this one. You're my buddy. Mm -hmm. I had to check it out, right? No, for sure. Well, yeah, tough, tough wasn't doing too hot for a long time. You know, this yeah. is, this one's got a lot of great ratings, but before yeah. it was, this was fun to watch Yeah, for sure. The other ones, the, this one's different from a lot of the tough shows because, you know, it's we're on ESPN. So it's It was always going to be a little bit more tampered down from the trashy reality to like you know more of a sports documentary than it was you know those old shows they used to they had 16 dudes and they would or maybe sometimes 32 dudes but they would have 16 dudes and they would cast 10 good fighters and then six not so great fighters but really good for reality tv <laughs> guys would you gotta the love dudes, that a little yeah, bit oh for sure like the dudes that you knew were just gonna get drunk in the and you're gonna get drunk and fight and <laughs> you know throw rocks at each other and like you know like just pranking each other right? i do remember some of those yeah but i <laughs> yeah. can't believe so like after they lose so they stayed through the entire yeah the entire time so even yeah so that i think we got there and we fought they weighed in within three or four days and then they fought like the fourth or fifth day because there was four fights on the first day and then there was four fights the next day and then we took a week off and they took four fights the next okay day, the last week so within that first uh sure. Within that first week, we had a those that guy fight like Nate Jennerman lost to Roosevelt Roberts. He was the first guy who lost on the entire show, and now he still has to be there the entire time, you know, because he was under contract that he was going to stay till the entirety of the show. Oh my god! So it's tough, man. Like you know, you th you're you're being reminded every day when you see these guys win. You're like, oh man, if I would have just not lost that fight, I could be moving on. And you know, it's always a woulda, shoulda, coulda game, and it would just. You're away from your family. You're stuck in this house. You're stuck in Vegas. You're kind of making some friendships. It's probably, I'm sure there's part of him that's like, well, the journey is over. So now I can, you know, have a good time. I can have, drink, drink at the house. Don't have to, I can stay up late if I want to. I can kind of yeah. enjoy myself a little bit, even though there's not much to enjoy being stuck in a house and no technology whatsoever. Just like rehab. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, that's what, what well, we like said. to call it, uh, you know, Drug and alcohol college. Drug and alcohol college. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty much like it is. Yeah, and that's what that's what Jelly said too. Because all they gave was uh, religious books, so there was no like fiction books. You couldn't you couldn't read a, you know, a, a horror story or a detective story. It was like they had the Bible, the Quran, the Book of whatever, Book of Mormon. I'm sure whatever. Um, those were the only reading materials they had, and they they were given oh, journals. They get journal at least. We saw Bracketona. That was a sweet moment. You know, give give Brad a little. Give Brad a little, you know, that pat on the back sweet. here, man. You know, making a very his, good passage. Yeah, good passage. He's like, I, I, I want to read you a passage from my my journal. <laughs> it made her cry, and it was sweet. You know, like yeah, that was I would cool. I would have done the same thing, man. Keep a journal. I actually did. Like this, this was my journal from like here's my practices, and like you know, I kept a journal. Oh, that's I even killer. kept a journal. Like here's fight day number one, talking about the different fights and stuff. Um, I love my team. Well done, boys. That was, that was what I wrote Hell on, on yeah. February 23rd, 2023, you know? So I, I didn't have as much time as them because I was, you know, training. We were training. Then I was going to take my coaches out to lunch and making sure they're taken care of before you knew it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before you know it, you go back to your next training session. And then you're just trying to chill, for, chill for a second. Yeah. Um, dude, dude, I was going to ask you, like, because I know you got a pretty vigorous schedule, like, as mm -hmm. it sits. What did that add to it? That was... Well, the... Actually, the funny thing was, is it was funny because when Connor, when Connor first announced that he was doing the show, he's like, I'm excited to do the show. It's going to be a full immersion into training and back into whatever, which makes sense for him because he was probably out, you know, living his life and not really training as much as I was training. But I was training a ton leading up to the show. And when I was at the show, I probably trained five times, you know, because me like quote unquote five times like when I five times where I actually felt like I got a real workout and because we're doing a practice and they're 135ers and 155ers so they're both kind of they're big enough for me to train with even with their the 135ers so I'd be drilling with Timor and then I'd say hey you know Jason come grab him do something here I'm gonna go help this guy because I would you're coaching too 
So I'm right. trying to get my workout in. I even said it like probably 10 times. Okay, today's going to be the day. I got my my good shoes on. I got my good <laughs> clothes on that I know I'm going to get after it in. And all of a sudden, after the warm up, I'm kind of showing some stuff. I'm like, oh, hold on one second. And I go over there and sh show Jason something or help Jason with something, help <laughs> Roe with something, help, help Hunter with something. You, you find yourself not really working out. All of a sudden, the practice is over and you're like, all right, I was here but I didn't really get a workout in because I was worried about my guys. And your so, workouts are a little bit different. Yeah, they were. Yeah. So yeah. they were. So I was like my level at which I need to, to hit, to actually have a good workout is, is very high. So I felt like I didn't get a workout in for basically four and a half weeks. You know? a guy like had a couple of lifts. Yeah. Had a couple of lifts, you know, um, lifted by myself a couple of times where I would just kind of show up and blare music and get after it. Cause I needed to blow off some steam cause I was pent up you know, yeah. and stressed like this, this journal was, ha I had this on me at all time. We're taking notes. I'm meeting with the coaches. Hey guys, let's get there 30 minutes early to talk about the next matchups. Let's talk about, Hey, Cody's struggling with this or Rose is struggling with that. Or Timor needs to work on this. Robert, you're going to take this. You're going to focus only on Timor today because of this. And Bob, you're coming, you know, so, so you took on a whole nother full-time job. Oh, yeah. And people say like, you're a great coach. I'm like, I guess just cause I cared, you know, I cared about these guys, but I would not want to be a coach. I, it was too much for me. Yeah. You know, I would do the show again. People say, would you do, do the show again? Absolutely. I mean, platform ESPN every single week, it's a great platform. And it was a, and it was a great experience. I created lifelong bonds with these guys. Well, you um, invested in them and you could tell that was, that was legit. And, and that was a, uh, you know, just the, the, the kind of attention you showed them. I mean, there was definitely a, a difference in what you were putting in and, what was happening on the other yeah. side, you know? Well, yeah, and and who knows? Like I said, they, we had so many hours and hours and hours of of interactions that'll never make TV. You know, my biggest thing was just showing up and being being less like a coach and more like a friend and a big or like a big brother. You know, like hey, man, yeah. let's, let's you know. Joke well, of course, they showed today. they showed Con when Connor did that. You know, they showed those moments, but it yeah. was like. That was kind of the vibe, though. He was kind of showing up to give him the Conor McGregor experience, and you were showing up to give him coaching. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely never about me, and that's yeah. that's and, and I think, I think I wanted them to feel that. I wanted them to feel that. Yeah, my name's on the back of the jersey. This is Team Chandler. This is McGregor versus Chandler. We're on ESPN. This is a great opportunity for me, but this isn't about me. If yeah. I just do my job and love on you guys and help get you guys to the next level and get you guys to where you need to be to be successful, then I'm going to look good no matter what. Absolutely. And that's kind of an overarching theme in life. Instead of thinking about the end result, just do everything you possibly can leading up to said end result and the end result will take care of itself. Absolutely. You know? So it was, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was interesting, man, having, you know, the team Chandler everywhere. They, you know, going to the, you saw the picture in the locker room was a picture of me, like, Standing there looking at looking away from the camera. I'm like, gosh, dude, like this is awkward, man. Like people don't understand how awkward that is. Yeah, like, We've got a semi truck right now oh, with my face on it. No. <laughs> it's parked every time I open my bus door. Yeah. yeah. And it's not my but you know, and they're never pictures you like either. Yeah. It's just just awkward as shit. People walking by like, man, Brantley really loves himself. Huh? Yeah, right. It's that's like, what I mean. I that's didn't what even I design I know. That, that, had that's what zero I to do with it. <laughs> Yeah, you just showed up. You're like, "Hey, we got a we got a surprise for you, dude. Check this thing out." You're like, "Oh, you put a picture of me on a semi." That's exactly this is how not what I want. This is exactly how. It this happened. is the exact opposite of what I would want right now. Nickelback <laughs> guys are out with right now. We're like, "Man, that's that's that man. It's that's awesome. It's like a, it's a rolling billboard yeah. down there. So, yeah, with my fucking face on." It. <laughs> I exactly. forgot to ask you. I don't know if we're allowed oh, to go so Oh, you're good, bro. Yeah. But I, I would, that was exactly how I would respond, too. I'd be like, yeah, dude. It's cool. It's great for marketing, but it makes me feel really awkward when, oh, <laughs> when I got to stand by it. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> the only time I really use it, and this was, dude, I'm I'm really not. It's like I'm the farthest thing from this guy. Anybody that's been on the road with me will tell you um, I'm kind of a, a bus body. Like, I don't mm -hmm. leave the bus much. I kind of try to stay out of everybody's way and you know, I bring riders out and I'm working all the time. But one, there was a time I had my, my dog out with me. And uh, he's an American bully. He's my bus dog. I still got him, but he don't go on the road anymore. My wife's scared of him. Um, but he, oh, uh, I had to take him off the bus to use the bathroom. And we're playing this festival, and there's this guy walking around back, and he was like, no dogs back here. And I was like, well, hey, man, um, I can't really go out there outside yeah. the fence because I'll get mobbed. Um, and my dog's going to have to shit. So <laughs> it's happening. 
yeah. you know, one yeah. way or another. I mean, hey, no dogs back here. And I was like, well, are you going to lock me up for letting my dogs? I'll clean it up. You know, and he's, if you're going to be like that, let me see your pass, like my backstage pass. And, dude, we just so happened to be standing right next to one of my trucks. Yeah. And I looked up and I was like, oh, I'm going to do it. And I was like, that's my fucking pass right there. Yeah. And he looked up at it and he was like, oh, dude. fuck. Dude, He's like, dude, I'm so is, sorry. That is so funny though. That moment, that moment where you're like, I'm not this guy. I, totally. I'm not the kind of guy to be like, Google me, dude. You know? <laughs> you hey, know who I am. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> I am not this guy. But seriously, my name's on that. My face is on yeah, that. Yeah, I could, like that's that's your boy. Oh, dude, that's <laughs> terrible, man. I feel like the biggest douchebag ever. And then he felt terrible. Yeah, so it was, but I've never done anything like that before. But that was, yeah, that was. Hey, it, was it was for your dog, man. You were serving your dog. That's why it wasn't I like you were it. trying to get you know free drinks or like backstage here. But like you weren't trying to use it for any other reason than your dog was about to take a dump, man. Like, like, exactly. And I ain't gonna let him shit in the bus. <laughs> yeah, I do. It ain't happening. You can't do that. <laughs> no. Will you hold him over to, over to the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> he would have probably let you do that. He dog would. was awesome, dude. Right? I got a yeah, Frenchie. You saw. Oh yeah, he's sick. He's in. awesome. Saw a snorkel on the way in, dude. <laughs> he almost comes over that. I know, he's man. Close. Yeah, he and he's getting better and better at it. There's been a couple times where he's like, almost gets his whole arms over top. I'm like, oh man, he's about to break both of his arms or or get out. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's just gonna show up beside you in here one day. <laughs> What's up, Dad? Oh, uh, dude. Well, what are you? Uh, so what are you doing here in uh, Nashville this week? So we've got a show here tomorrow night. We're out nice. on tour with Nickelback right now. I'm not sure when this is airing, but um, this will come out Wednesday. So okay, yeah, we will have already played. You, you just you just nailed it. Yeah, you just nailed that show, dude. Yeah, knocked it That's out of cool, the park, man. Touring with Nickelback right now. Yeah, it's cool, dude. Honestly, like it. I've been on a lot of tours, right? Mm -hmm. And usually, you'd be surprised at how much time we spend going back and forth on like what production we're allowed to use, how much stage space we have. Are we allowed to use that screen? Can we shoot fire? Can we shoot smoke? Can we do mm -hmm. this has been this tour above all others. They they basically said, Man, we want to have the best show and the best experience we can offer people in twenty twenty three. How can we help you do your part in that? That's and cool. I mean, dude, we fit all our stuff into one semi wow. for this this entire tour. And we're using a lot of their set. They they've just been open door man. Those guys are incredibly nice too. I mean, you never know what to expect going in. But mm -hmm. for as much shit as they taken, like there's some likable dudes, yeah, man. I, I mean, I got nothing but love for every one of them. Hey, there's a lot of Nickelback fans out there who won't admit that they're Nickelback fans, but they're Nickelback fans. You know, they take oh, I'm a, they seeing take them every night. Heck yeah, dude, dude, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I like Nickelback. I ain't afraid to say it. You no, know? dude, like, I love some Nickelback. Yeah, dude. So. I never did get on the hate train. No, I know. I was like, I don't get it. Yeah. I like Nickelback. Creed takes Creed takes a lot of heat. I like Creed. Creed has Creed, some good Creed's stuff. Coming, They're going Creed's back back, dude. Yeah. I fought a guy named Scott Stapp. Scott Stapp's the lead singer. Did you fight these guys? I didn't Scott the No, but a lot of people do. A lot of people have made memes or whatever. Like, with <laughs> arms wide open, Chandler knocks out Scott Stapp or whatever. <laughs> My second or third fight ever, I fought a guy named Scott Stapp. So, oh, shit. And I actually met him at a, a Preds game one time. And I was like, hey, man, you know, you know, fan of your music, whatever. And by the way, I fought a guy named Scott Stapp. Because you, know, you might never meet another guy named Scott Stapp ever. It's, right. not, a very, it's not like John Smith. It's right, not a very, it's not like a very normal name. <laughs> <clears throat> so it was, uh, it was funny. He's, a, it was, he's an interesting dude, from what I understand. But yeah, man, this this tour's been uh, unbelievable. So we're we're here. I'm hanging with you today. My wife and kids are out with me. That doesn't get to happen often. So, awesome. um, her brother actually lives here. He's an orthopedic surgeon here. Um, so they're getting to spend some time with him while I hang with you, and then Great, go get some dad time in, and then. Play the show tomorrow night. We've got some some special guests coming in. It's gonna be a Ooh, it's gonna be a mad. Doggy, house. sorry we can't tell you guys, but he's gonna tell me once we get off air. Hopefully, yeah. But yeah. well, that's uh that's awesome, man. Well, thank you for making time. Um, you've been a friend of mine for a long time, and love seeing you killing it. Love seeing you getting after it. Absolutely. So thank you brother. for doing this. I know the I know our our audience loved having you here, and uh, go melt some faces tomorrow night. Oh, we're gonna go do it, brother. I appreciate it. you, of having course, me. man. Thank you, man. <laughs>
that's our show for the day, boys and girls. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you uh, share this, like, subscribe, do all that other stuff that Jelly Roll said uh, <laughs> a couple yeah, of weeks ago. I'll tell your ugly cousin to do it too. <laughs> yeah. Spread it to all your friends Jelly, like COVID. Yeah, Jelly wrote the best. He, he made the best promo ever. He's like, now hold on, I'm taking over the video. Like, subscribe, all right, we're going to break the algorithm. You know, Jelly, <laughs> Jelly's freaking, dude, he's the man is good in a room. Phenomenal promoter. Like, he just like, oh. come on, y'all. Like, he, I love it, dude. Dude, he's the best, that's man. That's why people, that's why people love him that's why people love you authenticity always wins so thank you all for being with us god bless we'll see you at the top <laughs>